Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Understanding Samplings in Statistics Part 1. So we are going to talk about sampling and the different kinds of sampling, but before we even get to that, I want to broadly talk about what is statistics, because as we talk about that, we have to talk about the idea of sampling. So statistics has a scary sounding name, but actually it's quite easy to understand. What if you want to understand the uh, how, how tall people are, let's say, in the United States? So there's millions, hundreds of million peop millions of people in the United States, and you want to know how tall they are. So you decide, I'm going to ask everybody. But the problem is there's 300 and something million people in the country, and you really cannot ask them all, because you can never get everybody in one place to really ask them or measure their height, right? Uh, so you try to mail things to their house, get them to fill it out. Some people are going to throw it away. Some people aren't going to do it. And then it might take you six months to even get the information back. And then there's going to be babies born anyway. And the population is always changing. So when you have a large amount of people that you're trying to study, or if you're working in a factory, uh, millions of candy bars coming out of the factory, or if you're working in an auto plant, you know, you have millions of cars coming off the line in, in a year, you have too many uh, too much information to try to collect, and so it's really impossible to actually collect information on millions of items, or even hundreds of thousands, or even tens of thousands of items sometimes. So what you do is you call what you're trying to study the population. That's our first definition that we're going to talk about, population. I could write these down, but honestly, I just waste my time writing it. It's a very easy concept. The population is just everything that you want to know about. How, how tall are people in the country? Well, the population's everybody in the country. If you want to know how long the candy bars are coming off your line to make sure they're all the right length, the population is all the candy bars coming off the line. But the population often is too big to actually measure everything about. So instead of doing that, we actually do what we call sampling. And that's what we're talking about in this lesson in statistics. So instead of talking about 300 million people in the country and measuring all of their height and try to get all that information and, and you just can't, then what you do is you try to sample, right? You try to take a small subset uh, of the population and we ask those people how tall they are. And we're making the assumption that the subset we choose, which we call the sample or the sample size, right? that we choose is representative of the entire population. So it wouldn't make any sense, okay? If we're trying to study the population of the height of everybody in the country, it wouldn't make any sense to talk to only people located in one small corner of the country, one small state, because people in that area might have a different height distribution. Maybe the diet is different. Maybe the uh, amount of sunshine they get is different. Maybe uh, there's many, many factors that, that can happen. And so the only way that we can sample a small amount of people and expect it to represent the whole population is if we choose the correct type of sample. We have to have what's called a random sample. And that's our second definition. A random sample is when we ask the people as a sample of the population in a way that it represents the whole population. So for instance, in our example with the country, you know, there's, there's 50 states in the United States. So we should ask people from every state in the country. We should also try to ask representative amounts of people with different ages. You don't want to ask only 50 year olds how tall they are or only two year olds how tall they are. You want to ask a variety of ages. You want to ask a variety of states and try to get that sample to represent and match the demographics of the population as much as you can in order for it to represent the population, right? If you're studying those candy bars or the cars coming off the assembly plant, you want to do a random sample. You want to, you don't want to just look at the first three cars that come off the line in the morning because maybe the people in the morning are tired and they just don't do a good job. You want to sample throughout the entire day or throughout the entire week, maybe every 10th car coming off or every 10th candy bar coming off for a period of days or even or hours or days to try to get a good representative sample. You don't want to look at just like the first couple candy bars coming off in the morning. Maybe the machines are not even calibrated in the morning properly. Maybe they run slower in the morning because you have to oil them. Or I'm just making this up, but there are... There are situations you can't predict, so you have to try to make sure that sample is random. So first definition is called a population. The population is just what it sounds like. It's everything we want to study, what we really want to know about. But the population is almost always too big to study, all right? So instead, we sample it. And we, when we sample it, we take a subset of the population, we study that, and then from that, we try to kind of make a generalization and try to learn about the population. But the only way we can do that 
is if the sample is what we call random. It, it needs to be random so that it represents the population. All right. And the last definition is called a bias sample. So that's the opposite of a random sample. A bias sample is when you, you try to sample, but you just don't do a good job. So in the population of the country, maybe we only ask, uh, you know, 30 people out of one city in one tiny little corner of the country. That is not a good representative, re representative uh, sample of the country. Because like I said, in different regions, you may have different diets. Genetics are different in, in different places. So asking, you know, 30 people in one little city isn't going to do anything. It, well, you'll get the data, but it won't represent the population. Same thing with the, um, uh, with the uh, measuring the candy bars. If we only measure the first five candy bars that come off the line in the morning, that's a biased sample because it's not really giving you data throughout the day. It's just like the startup and the ending of the, of the machinery that's running may not work so great. So the biased sample is a situation where we're not sampling randomly enough so that we're confident our sample makes sense for the population. So three definitions. They're very easy. That's why I'm not writing them down. The population is the whole enchilada, they say, right? It's everything I'm trying to study, everything I'm trying to learn about, but it's often too big to study. So I sample the population. There's two kinds of samples. The random sample is a good statistical sampling where the data is randomized and I try to do a good job to not uh, to, to, to have a random sample to represent that population. And the third definition is the opposite of that, a bias sample. I do not do a good job in that case and, uh, of making a good random sample, so we call it a biased sample. So in the problems that we're gonna do now, I'm gonna read the situation and we're going to decide together if it is a, uh, uh, if it's a random sample or a biased sample. All right, so let's take a look at problem number one. Corina wishes to find out which seventh graders would prefer uh, an afternoon recess or a morning snack break. So to find out, she asked all of her friends on the morning bus ride, all right? And so I want you to tell me, is that a random sample or is that a biased sample? So what you're trying to study is which, uh, what, what would seventh graders prefer, right? Karina's seventh graders in her school, what would they prefer? An afternoon recess or a morning snack break? So the population here, it's not part of the question, but the population is the seventh graders in that school, let's say, in Karina's school. So you decide to try to figure it out. Now, the way she tries to sample it, because she can't ask all the seventh graders, there's not enough time. So what she does is she goes on her morning bus ride and she asks those people. And you would think that's a pretty good job, right? But the actual answer to this is, in my opinion, this is a biased sample. It's a biased sample because you're only asking people from, uh, from one little tiny subset of seventh grade, one little bus ride, okay? And those people only live in probably one certain little neighborhood. It's not a random sample that covers all of seventh grade. It's just, I don't know how many people fit on a bus, maybe 30 people, 30 kids on one little school bus, which is just services one little neighborhood, right? So uh, she's only asking students on one particular bus, uh, and she only asked her friends because it says right at right here. It says she to find out she asked all of her friends on the morning bus ride. So not only is she just asking from one little bus, which is not representative of all of seventh grade, but also she's only asking her friends. Now her friends, when you have a, a friendship with someone, you probably have similar interests or you could have similar interests. So you might not even realize it, but because you like snack breaks or recess, let's say, let's say you really like recess, then your friends probably play with you at recess and they might answer the same way. Because you guys are friends, you might be likely to answer the same way. And so it's a biased sample. So when we actually study things, we have to be really careful to not ask our friends because we introduce bias, right? So this is a biased sample because we're only asking students on one school bus, which is probably servicing one neighborhood and we're only asking our friends. So that introduces bias. That is not a good way to sample the population of the entirety of seventh grade, right? If you wanna do a better job, you'd probably go and take a look at all the classrooms in seventh grade, and of all the classrooms, maybe you ask like five people out of every classroom in the school, and that would be a better way to sample everybody in seventh grade. All right, problem number two. It says, Ian is wondering if the flavor of jelly beans in a bag are evenly distributed. To check, he pulls 20 jelly beans out of a bag, pausing to shake it between each pull. So he wants to know how these jelly beans are in a bag, and they're all different colors, right? So he wants to know if they're evenly distributed. In other words, do I have roughly equal amounts of red, green, blue, you know, or, or do I have a ton of blues or a ton of greens, or are they all evenly distributed? That's what he's trying to figure out. So he shakes the bag and he pulls one out, and he shakes the bag and he pulls another one out, shakes the bag and pulls it, and he does that until he has 20 jelly beans, and then he looks at what he has. 
That's a good way to sample. That is a random sample. Why is it random? Because he is not, um, the main reason is because he's pausing to shake the bag and that jumbles everything up. And so when he pulls the 20 jelly beans out, he's likely to get a random sample of what is in that bag. So if, of the 20 that he pulls and he learns that there's roughly equal amounts of red, green, blue, then it's probably a good representation of the entire bag of jelly beans because it's randomized with the shaking, all right? So uh, I guess I should go back and talk about problem number one. Problem number one was when we went to the bus stop or we went to the on the bus and we tried to sample the seventh graders by taking a look at the bus uh, and we asked our friends, that was a biased sample. Number two is when we're looking at those jelly beans and that's random. Notice the main difference between these guys. You only ask your friends, a small group of people from one little corner of a neighborhood, and this is like shake, shake, shake the bag, pull jelly beans out. It's obviously gonna be a better sample here because it's randomized. Problem number three, it says, Bella wants to know which moviegoers prefer, the newly released horror film or the newest animation film? To see, she surveys the first 10 people uh, to purchase a ticket for the 5 p.m. show. Is this a random sample or a biased sample? Well, that's, a, in my opinion, a biased sample. Let's think about this. We want to know, are people really wanting to watch the, uh, the newest animated movie or the newest horror, you know, slasher movie or something like this? Well, first of all, I'm only asking 10 people. That's not a very big sample size anyway. 10 people is just not enough. I mean, there's when we learn statistics, we, we learn to figure out how big of a sample size we need. But I can just tell you by looking at this, asking 10 people is not a big enough sample size to really be able to draw very many conclusions. That's number one. But even putting that aside, the big problem is that you're only asking those 10 people at the 5 p.m. show, right? At the 5 p.m. show. So you could have a situation where most people are interested in the horror movie, but only interested in watching it at night, right? So maybe it's not a good sample because you're asking for a 5 p.m. show. People are more likely to take their kids to a 5 p.m. show for an animation movie. People are not as likely to watch a horror movie at 5 p.m. In my experience, this is also biased because it's my experience, but my experience is most people go to horror movies at like eight or nine o'clock or 10, even 10 or 11 o'clock. So if you ask those people at the 5 p.m. show and they, and, and they answer animate, I like animated, animated, animated. Well, do you think nobody likes the horror movie, but the reality is that people just weren't in line at that time. So in order to take a real uh, random sample, you should ask lots of people from lots of different time slots and really get a good picture of what the demand really is. So for this problem, when we're asking if they want an animated movie or a horror movie and we're only asking at the 5 p.m. show, this is a biased sample. In other words, it's not a good sample. So anytime we say bias, this is not a good sample. Anytime we say random, that means it is a good sample for statistical purposes. All right, number four, it says Jarvis wants to know if his tomato plants produce more fruit in the middle of the garden or on the outside, on the outside you know, border of the garden. To check this, he keeps track of every other plant on the middle rows and every other plant on the outside rows. So he wants to know, uh, do, do, does his garden do better in the middle of the garden or the edge of the garden? So what does he do? He checks every other plant. That's the first thing he does. He doesn't check them all in a single line. Every other plant to get a good representative uh, sampling. And he checks on the inside and the outside and compares the two results. This is a good random sample because he's not only checking every other plant, which is kind of trying to help spread it out, but he's also looking at the middle uh, of the garden and also comparing it to what's happening on the edge. So that's a good random sampling. So we'll call that random random. All right, let's take a look. And random is good. In statistics, random is good. Two more problems. Number five, it says George wants to know how many students in his math class complete their homework every night. He places everyone's name in a hat and he draws names uh, of eight students to ask them. Okay, this is a random sample. So we want to know, first of all, what's the population? The population of everybody you, you really want to try to learn about is everyone in his math class. The entirety of his math class is the population. We don't really ask everybody in the class, though we want to sample it. So how do we randomly sample? We put everybody's name in a hat, we shake it up, and we pull eight representative names out. So because we put everybody in there and we randomly pulled from a, uh, from a hat, so to speak, and we pulled eight of them to check, 
and we shake it up, then we ha have a reasonable um, reasonable certainty that the names that we pull out and we ask those students what you know if they completed their homework every night, reasonably sure that that sample might hopefully represent the um, the population of the class because it's randomized that we put it all in a hat, we shook it up, and we asked them. So that is a random sample. Now we could argue if eight students is enough or not, but um, you know, depending on how many students are in the class, we don't even know how many students are in the class, but still it's a randomized sample, so that's a good start. It's a good way to do it. Now problem number six is very close to problem number five, so let's read it carefully. Shelly wants to know how many students in the school complete their homework every night. She places the name of everybody in her first period class in a hat and draws the name of eight students to ask. Is this biased or random? At first, it sounds like it's exactly the same as the previous problem, but let's compare them. In the previous problem, we were only interested in the students in the math class. So we took all the names of the students in the math class, we put them in a hat, and we drew. So we had the entire population in the, in the hat, we drew eight names of the math students. But in this problem, it's different. The population, what we're trying to study is not math class, it's everybody in the school. So it's many more students, thousands of students, instead of just one classroom of students. But in order to check it, we don't randomly check, you know, different periods throughout the day and really try to, you know, m catch everybody throughout the day and just try to make sure we have a good random sample. Instead, we just put everybody in the first period class in a hat and draw names. Now that, you might think it's random, but it, that's not because, you know, think about it. There could be students late to school. So if it's first period and you're running late, maybe your name isn't even in the hat. Maybe the students that are up late working on their homework are late to school. Maybe they're late to school because they worked on their homework. So the people that aren't in the hat for first period, they may be people that are doing their homework. Or it could go the other way. Those people that are late might be just total slackers and don't care about homework. You don't have any idea that because you only checked one period, you can introduce variables that you're not predicting ahead of time. So in order to sample this properly, you should sample multiple periods, multiple times of day, multiple ages, multiple classrooms, and choose a sample of you know, of what you can do from all of those categories. Here, with just picking names from first period and only eight students, that is not a good representative sample of the entire school. So this is not random, this is biased. Biased, and that's not good. All right, so in this lesson we did a lot. We talked about, number one, what is statistics? We want to learn about a large population of things. You know, I've been talking about um, I've been talking about, you know, the population of a country. I've been talking about candy bars on an assembly line. I've been talking about cars coming off an assembly line. But really, we use statistics for lots of things. We use statistics in science to study the movement of gas molecules, because there's trillions and trillions of gas molecules in this room, incalculable. So we, we have methods to try to study those large populations that we can't look at every gas molecule. But we can take a sample and we can learn how gas Work, uh, behaves as a whole by taking a sample and learning about it, which is what we do in, in the science of physics, right, or chemistry. So we use it, I guess is what I'm trying to say, in these uh, cases where we're surveying people, but we also use statistics in real, you know, science and learning about how the world works as well. We also use it in, of course, in mathematics, even in economics, how the, how the economy works a lot of the time uh, is related to statistics as well. So we learn about the population, what it is you're trying to study, and that we can't really like ask everybody in the population or study everything in the population, so we sample it. So we grab a sample, and if that sample is random, then that's a good sample, that's a randomized sample, and that's a good representative way of studying that population. But if that sample is biased, then it can often skew your results and make your results not, not really valid. So we strive always to have random samples and statistics. That is the bottom line. You always wanna to try to randomize your samples. You never wanna to try to introduce any bias into your sample because you're trying to get an unbiased view of what it is you're studying. So go through these, make sure you understand what a population is, what a random sample is, what a bias sample is, and then look at these scenarios we talked about, make sure you understand how we came to these conclusions. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue talking about sampling in statistics.